Good, so just a little bit of cat stretching and inhaling. And exhaling. And just have a, have a little morning wiggle around in that posture as well. So roll the shoulders a little, roll the hips seat a little. Then we'll just come down to sitting onto our the top of the foot. And just be very careful with any of your movements today with, with your knee. Yeah? Good, and we'll move that aside a little for Varasana. So we'll take the feet aside and we'll bring this just in a little. You're right, you just stack yourselves up or you've commandeered all the balls. You can use the block as well. You can use the block to sit up on. So remember, in Varasana, if it's too much pressure for the top of the foot or your knees, then use the bolster, use your height. Otherwise, you can sit down into the floor. And if that's okay, you can go back a little, but only if you've brought yourself down to the floor. So a little bit of the frontal thigh stretch. Good. Inhaling and exhaling. So bringing your pranayama, your breath awareness, into your asana, into your physical, or into your seat or postures. Good. So your test has been deferred to um, this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Your, your, your self-practice test, okay? Because we're, we're shooting, we're shooting video this morning. Right. Good. Now you can obviously stay. I'm, I'm going to move a little bit, maybe a little bit faster through postures this morning. Then you, you could actually stay in this posture quite happily for five minutes and have a nice stretch out. But we're just going to kind of move on today because I just want to cover the postures. But you know, at any point that you can stay longer in a posture, of course, if that's feeling really good for you on that day, yeah? Good, but we're just going to come out of that now. And we'll kind of throw in a little bit of the test, actually. So what was, what's the first, what's the first nice easy pose to start our practice with? I'm asking you, Joanne. <laughs> that's it, a lunge for the left thigh. So we'll bring the right foot forward bring the shin vertical, very nice everybody, and bring that down, good. And of course once you're in there and you feel a little bit of intensity, not too much, not too little, then lengthen your breath. So just remembering that Lengthening our breath and breathing down into our belly sends a physiological signal to our body to relax. So in the face of this intensity, we want to relax and that's the most efficient way that you can be in postures. Good, moving the front foot forward a little. Keep the knee bent, but flex the foot, push into the heel, and then slowly bring yourself backwards until we straighten the front leg. And then inhaling and exhaling. And now we're relaxing into the hamstring. Now if we activate the front of the leg a little, squeeze the quadricep a little, it helps to keep the leg straight and it also sends a signal to the hamstring that it can relax. It's like the quadricep is saying to the hamstring, I've got this, you can relax. It's like our breath is sending a message to the hamstring saying, I've got this, you can relax. Take the bolster to the side and we'll come down into pigeon pose. So bring the shin across the mat. Take the knee out a little more, so the front knee can down. Right. And the, the hips are in the middle of the mat. 
good Karen, your knee can, your front knee can go a little closer to Cody's. Your front knee can, yeah, just a little. Just so that the hips, because you, you're looking like you're kind of falling towards Cody at the moment. And if you take that, yeah, that's it. Just feel a little more like you're not falling. Now, this knee is okay, Joanna. This one's okay. So you can move it out a little closer to Karen. So front knee can go, there you go. And then you're a little more balanced in the pose. So the hips want to be in the middle. And then breathing and relaxing. Once you've been in a stretch for four or five breaths, there will have been some release, mostly. Then you can open the front knee a little more and walk the back knee back a little more and find a slightly stronger, not too much, slightly stronger. Try moving the knee, not the foot, Jacqueline. Leave the foot where it is and then take the knee towards clear. Yes, like that. That's a, a better way to move that stretch. That's it. Good, and then we're going to roll down, so we'll back out of that, roll onto the right hip, and we'll kick the right leg out to the side. So let's bend the knees a little first, first thing in the morning. Leave the knees bent, and just come down onto the elbows facing the front. That's it. So we get a little bit of a back stretch here, a bit of a lower back stretch. And again, then again, after four or five breaths, that will diminish. Then you can begin to straighten the leg. So push the back leg straight behind you and take the front leg out to the side. You're probably going to get a bit of a hamstring stretch behind the knee and a little bit of stretch maybe down what's called the iliotibial tract down the outside of the leg. This is, this is reverse trikonasana drop down onto the floor, something like that. Keep the breath full and smooth. Good. Jacqueline, you can straighten that front leg a little more. I know you can. There you go. But, but if you were happily lost in your breath, that's okay too. Alright, when you're ready, bring this all the way back to center. We're all going to face this way. Now when we're doing frog pose, it's polite to look between your forearms. Just with the heads up. <laughs> especially when you're in a group. Especially when you don't know people in the class. So we're going this way, and it's frog pose. <laughs> I'm going to sit this one out. And you better sit that one out. That's a good idea. So you can do our Pashimodanasana, which is a forward bend with both legs straight. So both legs straight, and sit up on the on your um, blanket. So knees wide, come down onto the elbows. And then we can slightly push back. Good, and we're still recording. Very good. Now, in frog pose, you can do a tiny bit of that cat stretch movement, moving the pelvis back and forward, and flexing and arching the spine. And you will find in that you get a dip, get that creates a different feeling down into the hip as well, which can be interesting. Again, you might find some extra little points of tightness there that you might want to just hang out in and breathe in for a little while. Good, and then slowly come forward, bring the hips forward, bring the toes in, so that you can come back out of that space. Back to all fours and a little bit of inhaling and exhaling. <laughs> okay. Left side. Let's do that on the left side. No, we do. Of course we do. Yes. <laughs> see, I need. See, 
I need an organizer. I need a you know volunteer coordinator. Yeah. That. Same again. Inhaling. And exhaling. So once we know a posture, we can be more aware of the posture and our breath. Once we don't have to think about what's this posture about, once you know what it's about, then you can explore a little more and take your attention deep inside the skin, right down to the bone. Get a sense of the mechanics of your body. And then combine that with a full breath, an easy, relaxed, full breath. And then we learn a little bit about the mechanics of our breath. And although we're still being active, all of that will create a deep sense of relaxation. So it's not necessary that exercise creates stress or high blood pressure, for example. Exercising the body can be a deeply relaxing process, and that's probably one of the major differentials between yoga and other forms of fitness in the world. Good, right, walk that front foot forward a little, and we'll glide back into a hamstring stretch. Clear, you can bring the bolster back a little and then bring your fingers back a little as well and that will just help you to straighten that front. It's not about straightening the leg, it's just about tensioning the hamstring. So as long as you're feeling a little bit of tensioning and then you're releasing into that, then that's all we're looking at. For example, you could inhale, bend the knee a little and then exhale, straighten the leg and inhale and exhale. Lots of ways you can be in a stretch. All beneficial. Good. And when we're ready, bolster out of the way, coming down into pigeon pose. the front foot a little. Give the front foot a little bit of a flex and that helps protect the ligaments in the knee. Which are which can be a little bit exposed in this stretch. There's a slight rotation in the knee in this pose which we have to be a little bit careful of. But if that's okay, you can open the front knee a little more and then walk the back knee back a little more and spend a few more breaths at a different level of intensity. Remember, the more intense the feeling in the body, the more you need to relax your breath. And if the feeling is so intense you cannot relax your breath, then back off the feeling. Slowly, slowly opening the body. Very good. Drop the left hip to the side, kick the leg out to the side. Keep the knees bent, come into your twist. But because we've already twisted on this side, you'll quite quickly be able to extend and straighten the legs. Engage your abdominal a little to lengthen your spine.
and a little bit of head stretching. Inhaling and exhaling. 